On the eighth day of Jay's Miss, I reviewed Paper buggy -o. Bug Fables for a lot of people, Paper Mario is a beloved yet conflicting video game series. Most people would agree that the first two titles for N64 and GameCube are both classic games. After that though, things get a little more divisive. Paper Mario to me is an exceedingly charming RPG that has a lot of the excess fat you'd often see in this genre trimmed, leaving only its purest parts. Its gameplay is simple, but still has enough to it that it feels engaging and satisfying to play. Mario has a bunch of cool partners that he meets along his journey, each a classic Mario creature with a ton of creativity added. They all have unique personalities and really fun designs that you never really get to see in other Mario series. Extend that concept to a whole world full of imaginative NPCs, memorable bosses, and a tight turn-based battle system that has everything you need for entertaining fights without ever getting too complicated. To make a long story short, the later releases strayed farther and farther away from a lot of the things that made the first two games so beloved. The traditional battle system was thrown out, and the artistic freedom allowed for the various characters in the games were limited severely. I wonder who decided that. Now, I personally really enjoyed Super Paper Mario, and I even had a lot of fun with Origami King. But I can definitely see why fans of the original two games long for that vintage Paper Mario style. Then along came Bug Fables, a game that attempts to recreate that classic Paper Mario feel while basing everything in an entirely unique world of insects. The art direction certainly passes the test, with clear and cute 2D character designs that feel probably most similar to Thousand Year Door. The battle system is pretty much a redone version of that turn-based style we've been craving, including those delicious timed input segments that make the fight so engaging. We've got what are the Bug Fable variations of Flower Points, Star Points, Badge Points, badges that grant special stats and abilities, food items that can be cooked and combined, hidden mystics that will grant good luck charms, uh, basically the essentials are all here. That isn't to say Bug Fables doesn't do some things different. For one, we don't exactly have a Mario and his partners equivalent in the game. Instead of having one protagonist who slowly gains allies as they progress, here, we only ever have the three same permanent members in our party who are obtained very near the start of the game, and they all sort of split the duty as leader. On one hand, this is good because it means we'll always have the same three characters with us, giving us plenty of time to see them bond and grow over the course of the game, though I'll have to admit I do miss the process of gradually building your party with new faces every chapter. Luckily our perma party of Kaboo the Beetle, Bee the Bee, and Leaf the Moth are a very likable bunch. The dialogue in the game is entertaining enough, though I have to admit it can get a bit wordy during little non-story moments where it doesn't really have to be, and since there's three talkative characters with us at all times, you may find yourself skipping a lot of the excess small talk. It's not that I don't enjoy their back and forths, but sometimes they back and forth in a fillery way that isn't that entertaining. The fighting system also has some new additions, most notably the position order of each character in your party giving them a status effect. The member leading the front has an increased attack, but will also be targeted the most often. The bug in the back of the group, however, will be less likely to be targeted, while also having their attacks be slightly weaker. There's also something about the battles overall that feel a little more complex than you might expect. In Paper Mario, I always confidently knew exactly what each attack will do to each enemy and vice versa. But in Bug Fables, partly due to the dynamic status of each character at any given moment, I often find myself unsure during battle exchanges. Throw in the whole rallying thing and it gets more confusing. The descriptions also aren't always the most helpful either. A numbnail. I hear numbnail sedatives go for a lot of berries on the market. I'll try to take some for myself when Kabu flips it out of its shell. I tried that already. Well, that's insinuating that it can work, so maybe we should turn relay. Try it again. Nope. Item and badge descriptions also occasionally leave out details that you don't find out about until after you've equipped them and tried them out manually. Alright, well we're gonna do the abomination and see what happens. I killed V. Wait a minute, that's not a bunch of TP, that was like 10. That wasn't worth it at all. See, this is why they need to be more specific with the items and badges. They need to say, we'll deal this damage, but then we'll give you this much TP. 
It shouldn't just say, does this, but gives a bunch of that. Like, that's way too vague. I want a refund. Aside from that, you will encounter the occasional little finicky things, such as the dynamic camera being delayed at times. It's a little late in showing you what's being turned. Like, it should probably zoom- yeah, see? Like, I didn't know it had turned all the way. Enemies preemptively attacking before their allies have finished disappearing from the screen. Oh! See? Now they caught me that time. And the way the dialogue skip button is used. It's the same button as using your special ability outside, such as a leaf shield. So there are times where you'll be holding this button down, something triggers dialogue, and then you'll auto-skip over it by accident. And they end up... Whoops. The game was definitely made for experienced Paper Mario players, as the difficulty here seems a bit higher for the most part. If that wasn't enough, they even include a bunch of optional secret bosses to provide even more of a challenge. Well, I think this is cool for the most part. The one thing I'm not so sure about is how they balance experience points. In Paper Mario, if you get so strong that enemies are pushovers, they'll only provide you with a single XP point after battle, which makes sense. In Bug Fables, however, enemies that can still put up a good challenge and chunk your health away will often give you hardly anything, while others that you defeat with ease pay handsomely just because you barely started encountering them more recently. With all that in mind, I have to say that Bug Fables is a really awesome tribute and spiritual sequel to the classic Paper Mario series overall. It's fun, challenging, charming, and clearly made with a lot of love. And any small blemishes you might run into should be prefaced with the fact that this was made by an indie team, nowhere near the team power and budget of a Mario game. So the fact this even exists is an awesome gift to the world. Plus it's GameCube controller compatible with the inputs and everything, so that's just bonus points right there. Thank you for your services, Bug Fables crew. I'm looking forward to your future releases.